Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com, and we're today here with the 45th episode. Uh, this is uh, the last tournament I believe I have from this $10,000 buy-in tournament online, so you will no longer have to worry about this. Uh, we're playing very short stack now against this one player who open raises, but in general we have a very nice chip stack. We're sitting at 163000 and the next highest stack is 90, 92000 so we are in very good shape. Here a guy open, so I don't really know much about, and if you look around at the stack sizes, you'll notice that both the opener and this player in the small blind are relatively short, and because of that, I think we definitely need to go ahead and three bet our hand. We're not really looking to call here and try to get a good flop. We're more so looking to just get money in the pot, so I do need to three bet. Now I need to figure out if I'm going to three bet small to induce him to shove with a lot of stuff, or if I should just make a larger three bet to obviously commit myself. And... In today's game, I think I would probably min -raise, or re raise small to try to induce a bluff, but in the past, I would not be surprised if I made a larger re raise. And I think this is actually an error that a lot of players used to make. Check out what I do. I make it 10,000. When I make it 10,000 here, this player should know with a lot of certainty that I'm never, ever folding. So, in order for him to continue here, he has to have a very good hand. Um, if I was to make it something like 6,200 here, it would put my opponent in pretty tricky spots where he could shove sometimes as a bluff. One thing that is good about making it a larger raise is that you effectively go all in against either short stack here and it allows you to fold versus this player in the big blind. But oddly enough, the initial opener likes to call. We flop a pair, but my opponent goes all in. So now I have to figure out what my opponent's range is to shove here. And I would think it's going to be hands that he wants me... He's shoving with hands where he wants me to fold some stuff. So I'm thinking... You know, it's kind of weird because if I have a king, I'm never folding. If I have a jack, I'm never folding. And if I have a nine... I may find a fold here because if, if my opponent does have something like ace-queen... Or any king or any jack, I'm just in terrible shape. But in general, whenever you see these shoves, they're usually with medium strength, weakish hands. And that is the exact opposite of what you want to do with those type of hands. Like if my opponent has jack-10 or 10-9, hands like that, he should certainly check to induce a bluff for me. Because if he shoves, I'm going to fold out a lot of worse hands and only continue with better hands. And, uh, you know, it's really tough to put your opponent squarely on a range in this situation. You can sort of do something like I did in the last episode where I... I did a range where, like, you know, X percent of the time he has a monster, X percent of the time he has a medium strength hand, etc., and figure out how you do against those ranges. And this is it's sort of an interesting situation because I think that whatever he is shoving here, he's doing it with exactly a very tiny range. So you can't really say as a large range of stuff like middle pairs, bottom pairs, flush draws, because that's not necessarily how he's going to play each type of those hands. You need to assign a percentage of the time that you think he's going to be playing each of those hands that way, even though it's only 100% of the time he's doing it. Like, if this guy has a flush draw, he's probably either shoving it or not shoving it. And if he has, I don't know, pocket tens, he's either shoving it or he's not shoving it. If he has two pair, he's either shoving it or he's not shoving it. So you need to try to figure out that kind of thing. But this is an interesting spot where I think you just have to call because you really do crush a lot of a standard weak player's shoving range. And also, we're getting 3-1, to one, so... Even if he does have a pretty strong hand, we have a decent amount of equity. So I think we just have to find a call here. And he did happen to have pocket tens, which I think is actually one of the worst hands to shove in this situation because I'm only going to call if I have him beat. You know, As I said, I would fold out a lot of nines here. I guess I'd call it ace nine. But I would be folding out um, a lot of the worst nines. And then I guess I wouldn't fold out like nine, ten nine, and queen nine because I do have got shots and overcards then to... Lots of stuff. So I guess he would get called by nines, but I'm really not three-betting very many nines in the first place. So really, he's only going to get called when he's absolutely crushed. So this is just an absolutely atrocious play where my opponent handed me a very nice chip stack. So that was very nice of him. If you guys have any questions or comments about this video or any others, please feel free to let me know. This has been Jonathan Little. Thanks for watching.